All right. And um, thank you, everybody, for coming out for tonight's program. And I'm not even going to try to say the superstition of 13. I'm going to say this program on superstitions. I will let Grizel from the Museum of Early Trades and Crafts uh, explain it to us. Um, and the museum is located in Madison, New Jersey, so really super close to us. Um, I am recording this program for today. So again, if you wanna not, right now it's just spotlighted with Grizel's um, screen, but if you wanna, you know, make, you know, not be on video or, or however you wanna be, be muted, that is fine with you, uh, me. And um, with that, I will turn it on over. I'm gonna mute myself as well. Oh, and if you do have questions, again, we were saying this is a small group. If you do have questions, please unmute yourself. Yes, yes, more than welcome to, to comment in here. All right, thank you so much. My name is Grisel Casasola, just like um, uh, Linda said. And thank you for having me here. I do come from the Museum of Early Tracing Crafts. This is our beautiful, beautiful building. Um, yes, I see that building now every single day because I don't work right there. I work, I was telling her that I work right across the street. We have an annex, education annex. And it's really good because I can watch the building all day and be inspired by the beautiful building. I'm gonna just talk a little bit about the building itself. Um, if you take a look at some of the features in the building, you see the tower in there, and you also see a little bit of the of the windows in there. Um, I don't know if in this particular picture you can see that those are stained glass windows. Uh, right now, and we're just seeing. Wait, sorry to interrupt. Right now, we are just seeing. Um, your spreadsheet. We don't see actually anything. You actually haven't hit on the uh, the. Oh, okay. Itself. So, so sorry. Thank you for letting me know. <laughs> sure, of course. All right. I am going to. Where am I? Oh, okay, right here. All right. Do we see it now? We see it. Please let me know. All right, is it good now? Yep, all good. Okay, thank you so much. So yeah, so I was talking about the tower of the building and I was also talking about the actual um, stained glass, uh, stained glass right there in, the, in your left, you will see it in, in the left. So this building, of course, it has so much history. It was built in 1899 and it was meant to look like something but it was never that something. So if someone wants to say what does it look like, but it was never, never that. But what does it look to you if someone wants to come in and, and to say something? All right, someone is pinching in the chef. Definitely, a church, yeah. So it was meant to look like a church, but it was never a church. It was actually Madison's first library. Yeah, so that was the first library in Madison. It was a very, um, uh, I will say that it was very uh, innovative and it innovative um, building because it is fully electric. So from the beginning, they built the whole building. It was fully, it has power, electricity all over it. So it's amazing. Then it became like too small to, to stay as a library. And at the end of the 1960s, it became the museum. And everything was moved from 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 here from the from this building. It was moved to what we have now as Madison Library. This is what it used to be. So this was my, uh, the, when it was the James Library reading room. So that is the main gallery for us now. You're gonna see it now in just a second. Yeah, there you go. That's very true. That's for sure true. A library, it is the temple of knowledge. So that's what it, is, what it used to be. And this is the same room specifically, this is the, the museum's main gallery. So in 1969, it became the museum. And now we have a very big, I will say that one of the, for, for the museum to be, that the building is not big, you know, other museums have like huge, huge buildings. And we do have a very strong, huge collection and we changed that collection right now that this specific um, 
exhibiting here is different. Now we have an exhibit that is completely out of one of the, the, the collections that we have. So it's really, really interesting. These are some of the, the paintings and the artwork that we have in the stained glasses. So another reason why people think that it was a church is because from the outside or from the inside, they see these paintings in the stained glasses window. And they think it's something from the Bible, from the scripture, but actually it is not. So in, in there you will see the foundation of every state is the education of, of its youth. So this is another program and I'm gonna talk with you at the end in Linda because we do have a program that tells and teaches all about these paintings in the, in the same glass windows and the artist who actually did it and why was he hired and everything. So it's pretty, pretty cool. And this is the library arch. So right here are the doors to and the entrance to the, the small library. We do have a very small library. And these are the seals from left to right. We have Rogers University. Uh, we have Penn State, Penn State University. We have Yale, Harvard, William and Mary, Princeton, and Columbia University. So these are some of the details that we have inside the museum. So please welcome. You're more than welcome. Whenever you're ready to, to go out, we will be so glad to have you there. Now, today's program. Uh, this is a very easy word. <laughs> so this, the fear of the number 13, the phobia is triskaidekaphobia. That's, that's the way it is, triskaidekaphobia and other superstitions that we're gonna be talking about today. Now, the really the exact origins and the, the you know, the really the root of so of these, of many of these, are really unknown because they vary from, from, from country to country, from continent to continent, and they also have um, a lot of history and many, many years. So from many of here, you will see that it's ancient Egyptian, ancient Greek, ancient Roman, so we go way, 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 way back. For the 13th, um, like I said to Linda at the beginning, I know here in the United States, people are afraid of Friday the 13th. For in my culture, I'm from Puerto Rico, and my husband is from Guatemala, we always heard that it is, it's not something that we believe, like we, uh, both of us personally, but we always heard that Tuesday the 13th was the, the bad luck day. All right, so this one has to do some in part of the 13 people at the Last Supper, Judas might have been the 13th, and he was, of course, the traitor. And then it becomes association they may have with Jesus being crucified on a Friday. So remember, at the end, Judas is actually um, the one that is, is the 12 disciples and Jesus. But Judas is the one who, who betrayed Jesus. He was crucified on a Friday. Many people today still change their behavior due to this. So we don't have the exact origin, we don't have the exact um, um, when uh, the date or, or the place, but we know that these go way, 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 way far. And yes, fear of the number 13, Triskaidekaphobia. Now, black cats. There is a movie where there's many movies that talk about black cats. So one of the movies, is, I think it, it's called, I don't remember the name, but it's with Jim Carrey, one of my favorite actors, so he's, you know, a comedian. And then he is actually afraid of the black cat, and then a black cat comes to him, and only seeing the black cat, he almost died. Uh, his character almost died, and I'm like, but why? <laughs> so this one definitely goes way, way back. So in the 12th century, throughout at least the 17th century, the black cats were often believed to be witcher, witches familiars, or even witches in disguise. So. We don't know really, we really don't know if this was true, but definitely just try to remember. Um, even right now, there are many places without electricity in the roads, like without power poles or anything. And then just being outside and in the dark, if you see a black, black cat, I don't know, it might be, it might be scary. So, but it definitely goes way, way back. And it's also associated with the devil. I don't know why, you know, black is, Cat is just a cat, but definitely the black ones 
people seem to associate with, with the devil. And this meant that a black cat, that is a black cat crossing your path was in contact with you being a malevol malevolent being. So I, I know I heard so many stories from my grandparents saying that if you find a black cat and you're walking around, going home, back home at night, that please just run. <laughs> you know, run for your life because that's, that's something bad is going to happen or something bad, actually, someone bad can come near you. I don't know. You tell me if you have any comments or any questions, please feel free to, to engage into this, um, to this program. Now, wish on a wish bomb. Definitely this one is it's not, it doesn't go like with me. Like I, I didn't grow up knowing about this one. I wasn't aware of this one. So when we were doing the research to do, to do this program, I was like, wait, what are you talking about? What, what, why is this a thing? I didn't know. Again, it goes way, way back. The Romans believed that wishbones were good luck and could be used to predict the future. Again, woo, Romans, more than 2,000 years ago, definitely. And as there were seldom enough to go around, they will be broken and the holder of the bigger piece got their wish. So in a way, it is a superstition, but it's a good one. Totally the opposite of the black cat, for sure. Now, this one I know, and please, I, I, I think at least one person in here in this group, you should have <laughs> either heard or seen in the movie that a broken mirror is a bad thing. It's a bad sign. I remember watching a movie one day and there were so many broken mirrors in the house. And I was like, why is there so many? And it was, it turns out to be like a really bad movie. And I was like, yeah, I'm not gonna keep watching this. But definitely if you have a broken mirror, why do you still have it? Like, you don't need to, you don't need to get rid of that one and just get a new one. <laughs> And a, and, a, and an actual one that actually works. So the meter superstitions have a long, long history for sure. Now, it's a pharmacy, ancient Greek practice of divini divination for a sick person. So the ancient Greek is, is even, I think, even more um, older than Roman, than the Romans. So they would do anything with the, with the, um, with anything that they had available to actually try to predict the future or have some information for something that is going to happen. So they will do this and they will use the broken meter to try to, to, to gain some sort of information for a sick person. The ancient Romans believe that your life renew every seven years if you actually have a broken mirror in your house. This is another belief. Now, some cultures, including some in the 19th century, the United States, covers the mirrors after a death. It doesn't matter if it's broken or not. That's the one that I heard. And that's the one that I grew up like knowing a little bit. Like when someone died around close to me and in my family or in my, in, with my relatives, they will actually cover the mirrors. Some people say that through the mirror, some bad things can come, you know, from the dead to the living. That's another superstition. So this one goes way, way, way back. And definitely it goes different from, from, from country to country and from region to region, for sure. Now, literally, <laughs> knock on wood, this one is definitely super popular and it goes away around all over. Um, I mean, I know people from Central America, South America, I know people from Europe and they all use it. So this one is one of the most universal or popular ones for sure. Now, one possible origin is that many ancient people believe that the spirits live in trees. All right, so um, a long time ago also there's there's another superstition, and um, my husband is right here. You can't see him, but he's right here. And he has he he told me so many times that if you are walking back home from wherever you are, and you are, I mean, here we don't have them, but in Guatemala and in Puerto Rico we do have mango trees. 
So he says that every time you're you're walking, you know, underneath the mango tree, you were here, you were here stuff. You you feel different. And there's something around that tree, and there's another tree. I forget the name, there's another tree. So definitely trees are, you know, um are, are alive in the sense that they're living creatures, they're living plants, right? But some trees might be different than the other ones. And then the Asian people, so so many, so many places, they actually thought that the spirits live in the tree. So touching one evoking evokes the spirit's protection or blessing. So in this side, they were thinking, okay, so if we touch it, we will have the protection from that from that spirit. So they, it, that was because it was a good spirit. Now, differently, could come from the association with the Christian cross. Again, Jesus was crucified in a wooden cross. So again, if you touch it, you will have good luck. That's what other people think. Similar phrases or idea appear in many languages and cultures, but nothing was is definitely the most popular one that we found when we were researching for this program. If you have any other idea, if you have any comment or anything, please pop it up and share it with us. Now, <laughs> cross your finger. Um, I don't know if this is a superstition or this is only just a normal believing, but I didn't grow up with this one. When I moved here, that's when I saw people saying, and I think Linda did it at the beginning when I was talking with her, like cross the finger that, that we get we can go out and do in-person programs. And it's funny because she didn't know that this was part of the program. <laughs> okay. I did, yeah, I know you did. <laughs> so and you were not aware that this was part of the program. So it's definitely something that is very close to your roots, to here to the United States. Um, we were searching and it's definitely something that also it was very common or common in, in definitely in Europe too, but not in my Hispanic Latino community, not, not so much. Now, another possible origin, early Christians will make a cross with another person at a time when Christianity was outlawed. So literally doing like this, you will let them know that you are also a Christian. Otherwise, if someone else found out that you were a Christian, they will kill you. So this was just like a signal, a, a, a hidden um, code with people that share the same belief as you. Now, it, then it developed into one person crossing their fingers, probably to, to practicality. So it was way more easy to do it like this than to actually do, try to do the cross like this or like this. So it was very easy like that. Eventually, it became a thing, and now it is like a wish bomb. If you do it like this, you're wishing for good things, good luck, or for anything that is good to actually turn into the, I mean, that is bad to actually turn into good things. So yeah, I don't use it. It is not part of my, my culture, of my personality, but now I know what it is. So I have so many coworkers and people that I know that they definitely do it, and I love to myself every time I see them because it's funny. To me, it's funny, but I respect everyone's belief, so no problem, no problem. Now, walking under a ladder, <laughs> this one is definitely, I don't know if it's, if it's something that you know, but definitely this, this is very strong growing up. Um, my grandparents would literally drown me if I do it. Like, there is something that they saw that it was a bad luck to go under the ladder. Either we had some people working in the house, in other houses and everything, and if a small children were playing or anything, and if it, they go under, oh, that was like, oh, we will get the lecture, they will actually sit us, sat us down and they say, you cannot do this because of this or this. I don't even remember what it was, but I remember that it was a bad, bad thing. Now, but going back, trying to get the origins, Another common theory is a ladder makes the shape of a triangle similar to the Holy Trinity, making it blasphemous and therefore bad luck to break the triangle. Another theory is that it is that it relates to the similarity in appearance between a ladder and the gallows. 
So again, we we're gonna see many of the superstitions that goes like in a to a religious way. Many of people I, it's, it's funny because a lot of the people that when I talk to them they say, Oh, I didn't know that this was because of the Christian or because they think that it was about um, you know, Jesus' death or something like that. So we use them or many people use them today, but they did they have no idea when they started, maybe or they, where where was it used? more because like i said we don't really know the origins or so many of this we just go as far as we can now this one is hard hard here on me my husband doesn't let me doesn't even let me to bring the umbrella inside it doesn't matter if it's open or not he, he it might be pouring outside we come and the umbrella is completely completely oh it's poor it's water everywhere and i want to bring it inside to actually open it so, so it can drip he doesn't let me do that um and i ask him uh i don't it's not because of bad luck it's something umbrellas are meant to be outside i'm like oh man then there's this, this a mess outside with the water because he doesn't let me actually you know properly take care of the umbrella it is practical especially when the umbrellas were a new invention so it's practical to leave the umbrella outside but what about when the, when the, the, um, the umbrella is soaking wet it's completely soaking wet so i don't like to bring them inside when it's wet i like to just open up and then leave it to dry <laughs> but we have definitely another theory here that goes way back to the ancient ages the shape of the sun sun shape mimic the sun god so if its shape fell on any non-royal, it was considered bad luck. So for this one, it's very different. It has to do with all of their gods and, and, and all of their royalty members and the family and everything. So it's a, a, a bit different. Other uh, story is of bad things happening to someone after opening an umbrella. Again, umbrellas are for us to be, to be used. We take advantage of the umbrellas, either to cover from the rain or from the sun. I never get why they say like, it might be bad, bad luck, but yeah, I guess ancient kept, uh, ancient Egypt kept doing it, doing it, doing it, and that eventually transferred to us. If you have anything about the umbrellas, please share it now or share it at the end, because my husband is, is really strong about this one. <laughs> It's feeling, yeah, this one is very, it, it was different for me too. I didn't, I really didn't uh, understand about this one because I didn't grow up with this one. But filling the salt, we go way back again. So historically, salt was a very important, but very expensive preservative and seasoning, making it like really wasteful to spill. So you will have, if you have, for example, right here, I don't use this, but this is my husband. This is um, hot sauce. So if you have salt in here, you will have to be like really careful, extremely careful because it was really expensive and it was hard to find back there like years and many, many years um, ago. So if you actually knock over and you pull the salt out, then that was bad luck because you are not supposed to waste it, okay? Now, cautioning that it's a bad luck to spill salt may have been a way to prevent the waste. That is one of the biggest one in there. So it is bad luck to spill the salt because you are not allowed to waste it. Now, the etymology of the word salary comes from the Latin salarium, meaning stipend, which is linked to the word for salt. So salary actually comes from the word salarium, which means what we made okay so take it from from the salt on the table to the way like okay if i make two thousand dollars this month i'm not gonna waste I'm, I'm not gonna be wasteful because i work hard for this so i have to be very careful and not to just throw away my money because i work hard for this all right so that is eventually what will become uh yes I know that is very true. Thank you, Deb. That was the old, the other, the other part. <laughs> um, but definitely, that was the reason. 
Uh, it is something that, that it was hard to find. It was expensive. Okay, so you're not, you're not allowed to waste it. But if you do, then again, eventually you do what Deb just said right there. That you will have to, I'm gonna read it because I don't know if everyone is it. If you spill the salt, you're supposed to throw some over your shoulder to cancel the bad luck. That's what Deb shared. Thank you. But definitely, if you make the money, if you work hard, don't, don't just wait. Waste your money. Be, be careful. So it goes the same with the salt. Ah, uh, now what? Now, this one is so funny because even today and right now in the era, in the middle of this pandemic, I suffer from allergies. So whenever I'm with my mask, I have to have a few different masks because sometimes I, you know, I suffer from allergies. So I, I, I sneeze. And if you sneeze close to someone, then people just run away from you because they think that you you have COVID, which is, um, I understand, I understand that even at the beginning last year it was even worse, but definitely after we sneeze, why do we say bless you? Uh, and in Spanish, in, in, in Spanish and in, 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 at least in Central America and the Caribbean is completely different because we don't say God bless you or we don't say bless you in Spanish. In Spanish, we actually say salud, which, which, which is basically wishing you uh, good health, all right? It's wishing you to, to actually um, to not become sick. Yeah, so we say salud. But in English, it's just bless you. But we're going to know here why. There is a long tradition in many cultures of expressing good luck after a sneeze. Related to the belief that, that if you sneeze, you actually expel evil spirits or allow an evil spirit in. So for many of these cultures and back then, again, there were so, so many superstitions. Uh, remember, no electricity, no, 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 no um, the, the, the power of, of connect with anything and to have a light bulb like I have in here, and then you will be at night. So it was different. A lot of things happened. Many things happen that, that people didn't understand. So for sure, if you sneeze, whenever you sneeze, unless you have a, an allergy, it might, it might actually be that you are becoming sick, that you get any cold or you're getting the flu or you're actually getting um, this virus that we have now. Now, the plague, out, the plague outbreak in the sixth century. Let, take a look at this date, sixth century. This goes way, way, way back. The Pope Gregory the Great ordered people to say, God bless you when someone sneezed, as sneezing was seen a sign of someone getting the plague, which is what's happening right now. Because of course, not only um, sneezing, because you're not only sneezed with COVID, but definitely getting sick now, a lot of people think, and many people think that at the end of 2019, the beginning of, of 2020, they had COVID and they didn't even know because we didn't have tests. So definitely for sure, one of the, of the, of the common um, symptoms is sneezing. Uh, how do you, how do you, um, you can say, how do you pronounce that in German means good health? Gesundheit. <laughs> and you said it so beautifully, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> there is a story that if you sneeze seven times in a row, the devil will steal you soul. See? Thank you, Deb, for sharing. I mean, there's so many. This one in, in particular, definitely um, a pope actually wanting people to say, God bless you. Remember, they were in the middle of a pandemic too, after the flight. A lot of people were dying. So something has to be done. But it carries even to this day. Look how many centuries ago, look how many millenniums ago, and we're still using it. Some people just say bless you, but you get the idea that it's the same. So it, it's, it's amazing. That's what I love about history. History, we have, we have it here to share from long, long time ago. I'm sorry. There we go. Now, the good luck horse shoe. Again, this was completely new for me. I learned so much while, you know, developing this program because this one I didn't know. Many cultures have long considered the horseshoes to be good luck, including the ancient Greeks. Again, we will see Greeks, we will see Romans, we will see Egyptians, 
definitely those are the, the um, one of the, um, some of the oldest civilizations. Now the iron was often attributed with the power to scare away evil demons, creatures, fairies, and witches, all the bad stuff. Everything, anything that was bad, the iron itself was good to prevent those to come near you. One possible origin, it is the story of the smith and the devil, which has various versions. If you know any of the, the versions, of the Smith and the Devil, please share. You are more than welcome to share either in the chat or at the end. So for sure, having a horseshoe uh, either outside of the door of your house or of your building or anything, you will see that um, in many in many um, places and cultures. Um, I haven't seen it here because we don't we don't live close to to people. Um, that might use it probably more the people in the in the countryside or something like that but this one is definitely used in europe because i have some of our dear friends they are from scotland and she has been telling me about this too so very interesting now <laughs> the bird droppings this one is really funny and i laugh because uh, i'm from puerto rico I'm from the island in the Caribbean, but that doesn't mean that I like the ocean or that I like to be in the ocean. I'm afraid, and actually, I will have to share with you that that is my biggest phobia. I am so, so afraid of the ocean. I can be in the beach, you know, right there relaxing for a few hours, but I will never get into a cruise or into a big boat or something like that. That's not me. And one summer we went to, 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 to the Jersey Shore, I think it was since I had, and I was just getting there. And then I don't know why I had this weird feeling. And I was like, yeah, I don't, I don't really want to go in. And I said to my husband, if you want to go, just, you know, enjoy yourself for a while. And I'm just going to wait for you here. And he said, no, no, we drove all the way down. We went. So then, as soon as I went and I got in, I saw that there were a lot of birds, probably like seagulls, a lot of them. And I was like, hey, where there are seagulls, there are fish. And if there are fishes here, fish out all around here, there's sharks. I'm going to get out. There's a shark. I mean, I know I'm going to be a shark attack, <laughs> a victim with shark attack. So while I was getting out, one of those birds actually did his thing or her thing on me. And I was like, yeah, I'm getting out of here. I was ready to come back here to, to Persephone at this area where I live. And it was like, wow. Oh. I don't like it. I don't like it. I don't like it. I, I'm leaving. I'm leaving. So it was just like a sign. I don't know. Probably I was saved by, by, this, by the bird dropping. But yeah, there were a lot of birds at that time. So I stay away from the shark. But many people believe that if a bird poops on you, good things are coming your way. See, I don't see it that way. I think that, yeah, yeah, maybe something was, was happening. And then the bird droppings actually saved me from losing my leg or something like that. So. And then my husband got out too, so I think I scared him. <laughs> but it also seems to be related to the idea that the rarity of this happening must make it such a lucky thing. In Puerto Rico, it's not rare. There's too many birds. There's actually like too, too many birds that you will have this very common happen to you anywhere, either on you or on your purse or in your car. In your car, it's even more common. You might go to to wash your car, you go to the car wash and your car is beautiful and then the next day is completely white or something. But in here it's less common, so yeah. I don't know, if, however you wanna see it, bad luck, good luck. I just, you know, I think I was saved by them that day in the beach. Now, coins in a fountain. This one is super popular. It's really, really old. We're gonna talk about it. Take a look at, I think that is one of the most famous ones, the one that is in, in Rome. Uh, drawing coins in a fountain started with the ancient Romans and continued with the Celts or the Celtics and another culture. It is something that has been done over centuries and centuries. Could have been to appease the water gods. May also relate to the water as a vital to life. So we all need water to live. So it is also related, might be related to that. 
but definitely as a kid and growing back in Puerto Rico, there were a few places, like especially one big um, shopping center, and it has like a huge, huge fountain, and you will go and you make a wish. I don't remember, I don't remember any of my wish we came through, <laughs> but that's the way I know it to make a wish. Um, but yeah, it goes like way, way back, and people still go to this, um, to this particular uh, fountain in here in Rome, and they do it. And there's a few, yeah, even a few um, songs and movies about about this fountain, and particularly about, about if you do it, then you will find your true love or something like that. So yeah, definitely, there's plenty of movies with coins in the fountain. Now, happy birthday! All right, so this is one that it actually made me think a lot because you have it from, for, for granted. Like, I will say for sure that I never knew or never understood why do we have to lit a candle or a few candles on a birthday cake, all right? So um, right now it's a little bit different because, well, I don't know right now, but last year, a lot of the or mostly all of the actual um birthday were celebrated through school or something like that everyone was you know quarantined and, and in their houses but still whenever we do have the birthday cake we have so many candles or just one or something like that but why now the ancient greeks burned candles on a cake as an offering to mood goddess Artemis. Mood goddess. All right, so they offered the cake and the candles to the goddess Artemis. Blowing them out might relate to the idea that smoke carries prayers to heaven. Yes, I see someone in the chat. Moon goddess. Oh, thank you. And it is really interesting because when you see that this that it says that the smoke carries prayers to heaven. So again, one is because to the goddess Artemis, but also to actually to be heard, so that your actual prayer can be heard in heaven. And then we have the concept of birthday candles seems to date to 18th century Germany. But I will add a little bit of this in here because I am not Catholic, but I have some of my, my, my families and my relatives that they are. So whenever they, they are praying for something or whenever they are actually doing the rosary, they lit many candles, all right? So it is really interesting because they keep that, even though it's not on the happy birthday um, cake, you know, the cake, but whenever they are praying, they will lit a candle. We had a very um, different and difficult year last year. And we, we, when we went through a very hard time as a family, one of my friends just said from Puerto Rico, I'm going to leave a candle for you today. And I was like, oh, okay. I mean, I particularly don't believe in that, but she does. So I said, okay, thank you. And that's the way that which she, she expressed um, her love to me. So definitely related to the birthday, it seems to go to the 18th century. Germany, and that's something that we carry even to this day. And I think everyone here in the United States does it, except if you if you are from a different religion or, or culture. But all over Central America, South America, and Latinos, the Hispanics, we do this. So this is completely um, global, yeah, worldwide for sure. Now three on a match. Three on a match. I did not know anything about this one, but I was doing the research and I was like, wow, I'm learning so much. <laughs> First appears in the US in the 1919 19 edition. So three on the match. A logical basis by the third flash of fire, a sniper will have time to find them. All right? By the third flash of fire. Could also relate to the idea that things Good, bad, etc. Come in three. So good, bad, something else. They might come in three. Some claim that the tycoon Ivor Ivor Kruger came up with the superstition to increase his business. 
I didn't know anything about this one. So if you know about this one a little bit, tell me what you think. Tell me how you knew it because it was completely new for me when we were doing the research. But these are some of the believings of its origin. Now, this one is extremely popular. Carry over the threshold. Um, but it's funny, it's the man carrying the woman over the threshold. This one is one that is done in many different countries, in many different um, cultures too. Um, and it's, I don't like it, but it's just something that <laughs> it's done. I don't know if it's really a superstition, but I don't know, it's kind of weird. We have some theories in here. Now, the bride symbolically signaling that she is reluctant to leave her parents. So when I say that I don't like it, it's not to offend anyone, it's just like, um, there are many different cultures that, you know, they don't get married because they love each other. It's just because they have to arrange marriage, something like that. But if it's something sweet or something that you would like to do, then that's fine. But definitely it was like a theory of, oh, okay, so the bride didn't want to leave her parent and her family. So literally the groom would actually have to carry her inside the house. Another one is protecting her from demons who might be in the new house. But if you have, if you have a new house, then, <laughs> then you, you might not need this because if you have a new house, then you might not have demons. But also another one is bad uh, luck for a bride to trip entering her new house. So her husband will carry her in. But what about if he trips and then they both fall? You know, my mind keeps rolling and rolling and rolling. And I think it's not a good idea, but yeah. Shows that she is her property now. Yeah, that's exactly Jan. Yeah, that's exactly what I don't like it. Because it's, to me, it's way too controversial. Like, we can both walk around. We're going to be working together and, you know, work in, in our family. So I don't need anyone carrying me. <laughs> but definitely, yeah, it's one that I know that it's, it's still being used in, in so many places, not only here in the United States, but so many places for sure. Now, <laughs> if you thought that triscolicophobia, it was a hard name, you know, the fear of the number 13, this one is even more. <laughs> Now, frisco is techophobic. People are scared of Friday the 13th. Like I said at, at the beginning, I think I just said it like very briefly. We don't believe I'm being scared on the Friday. It's actually Martes 13, which is Tuesday the 13th. Many people start to associate the symbol with real life. So anything bad will happen on a Friday on the 13th and then we affirm this belief, right? So definitely, if it happens on a Friday in here and it's the 13th, I will not say anything. But if it happens on a Tuesday, then I will be like, oh boy, this is not good. <laughs> and it, I don't know, it's something in like, it, it's engraved here in my mind. While all the bad things that didn't happen on that day or that happened on a different day are ignored. And this is one of the most uh, common phobias that I, that I found when we were doing research. Definitely if afraid of the number 13 together with, with the Friday. And that is it, my friends. But I will share with you now some of the actual um, some of the actual superstitions that are pretty known in Guatemala, since my husband is from Guatemala, and he allowed me to tell you. There is one that is very interesting, and that is about um, putting actual the garlic cloves inside your purse and in something like in there. And I told him why in the world you will do that. That is completely, completely um, ridiculous to me because that will stink really soon. And he said, well, that is good luck when you do it. You actually keep all the bad away and then all the good inside and I'm like okay that's really gross <laughs> but that is one uh, there is another one that is um when you're actually um sweeping so if you are sweeping and then by any 
reason or something, you have your course in, in the ground, that is bad luck. Do not never ever put your purse in the floor, in the ground. That is bad luck. Something bad will happen to you. And yes, so that is really bad. And in a, if someone actually is sweeping and it might sweep your feet, then that is another bad luck superstition because in something bad, someone bad might sweep, might take your and sweep you away. So that is really another another common one in there. Uh, <laughs> yeah, that's definitely very common, like the garlic for, for the vampires. And another one is about the wedding. Um, it is a very um, weird, I don't know if it's weird, but it's something that we do. So the actual um, bride with the actual groom, they are not allowed not only to see each other before, you know, everyone does that. He's not allowed to see her before he gets married. But then after, they are not allowed to to go away unless they actually have like the blessings from, from the family. It doesn't matter if you're already married or anything. You're not allowed to go away um, to your honeymoon if you don't get the blessings from your family, um, for your parents, or for both families. So if the families were not uh, okay, were not happy with the with the with the marriage with the union, then you will have going, you will have that luck for the rest of your marriage. So that one is really, really common for sure too. I'm going to, yeah, please. I don't know how many do we have in here, but please share your your own belief, your own superstition. Did I get to any of the ones that I, then you're more common and, and more used to? Or did I miss anything? Please share. And please ask some questions. I'm not an expert, but I'm here to, to learn. <laughs> it's funny that you said crossing the fingers. I didn't even realize that I do it, <laughs> but I guess I do. And, and now I know why, but um, yeah, if anybody else wants to unmute themselves and, and remember a certain uh, superstition, like, you don't realize that something as simple as blowing out candles is actually is a superstition, you know, when you, when you yes. think back on it. Of course, I'm thinking yes. of the little school kids being like, don't step on a crack or you break your mother's back. I don't know what that was about. It's jump roping days. But if anybody wants to put something in the chat or unmute themselves. Hello? Yes. One thing about a leftover from black cats is that they're the last to be a, a, adopted in rescues. Same thing for black dogs. Um, because of the fear people still have or trepidation of black cats. So uh, black pets are the last to be rescued if they are rescued from shelters. And then definitely that is sad, yeah. That is really sad, yeah. Um, yeah, you see how strong it is, uh, uh, Linda, this, how strong this superstition is that people actually go away from black animals from black black pets or something that's really sad one thing the um on twitter there's an account called the oval pawfus it's a um it's an account like a fan account for the first dogs of the united states champ and major and now major and you know, oh yeah yeah a cousin of a first cat and stuff and I know she she's a relative of President Biden, a niece or something. And she posts every once in a while about adopting black cats on her posts to try to get people to be aware of uh, the situation and not to overlook them. Yeah, no, that's, thank you. Thank you so much, Adrian. Adrian, she said in the chat. Um, yeah, definitely, that's, that's, and I never think about it because I wish I, I can adopt animals in here, but I'm, I'm really, I don't have the space in here in our apartment, and I never thought of that. I, I, it's just amazing that it goes so strong for so many people. It's definitely a situation that I hope, I hope it changes in the future. You see, we need to, we need to get the word out. These are just superstition. Let's just save those cats and those, and those on, on dogs and everything. Well, that's yeah, another. Yeah, I was going to yeah. just say too, and I think that's what was fun about this presentation is it does re make you realize that you don't even realize you have a superstition when, when you kind of do and and at the end of the day, you don't need to like I said, especially perfect example with with a beautiful black 
dog or a beautiful black cat. I mean, yeah, you, you don't need to have a superstition on that. And with that, yeah. I am going to stop recording this just to let everybody know.